The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. Hello, my name is Scott Jones. Like you said, I work at NIST. I'm going to be presenting some of the work we've been doing, examining the uh, interactions of limestone powder with Portland cement and fly ash and both binary and ternary blend formations. These are some of my collaborators I've been working with. Some of them are at NIST and a few other places. That's been quite a big effort, I would say. So what we've done is we've looked at limestone powder additions as replacements for cement and low water cement ratio, cementitious material mixtures. We've also replaced the cement paste, so the cement and water with limestone. And we've also used it as a replacement for fly ash in ternary blends. And finally, we've also done a little bit of work as replacing the fine sands with limestone for cold weather applications. And that's been done in lieu of using traditional calcium chloride accelerators. Looking at our little ternary diagram here, we see initially we start out at the bottom if you can see this down here. So we're gonna look at just cement replacement with just limestone. And uh, Powers model tells us that at about a water to cement ratio of 0.36, we start to see unhydrated cement left over in the microstructure. So if we can replace some of that unhydrated cement with limestone, that would be beneficial. You know, cement's expensive, limestone comparatively is not. Extending Powers model for limestone systems, we see that the farther down we go, lower water to cementitious materials ratio, the more limestone we can replace with cement, or the more cement we can replace with limestone without changing the capillary porosity very much. So our objective here is to produce concretes with equivalent performance of OPC concretes. And so for this first set of studies, we've just did a 10% replacement by volume of cement with limestone. So we maintain same aggregate contents, water contents. And do we get performance equivalent results? Well, in some ways, I think we do. The setting times all are approximately equivalent. However, the strength values at 1, 3, 28 days are tracking below the OPC concrete, but our rapid chloride permeability and surface resistivity measurements, they're all approximately the same, which is sort of telling us that we're not changing the microstructure or the capillary porosity too much. Mm -hmm. We should note that this is done at two different median diameter limestone powders. So you see here with this finer, smaller diameter powder, we do observe a slight accelerating effect with the limestone, but it's not too much. So to improve the strength values, we moved to replacing the cement paste with limestone. And we did this with uh, different and two concrete mixtures with a 6.7 micron median diameter limestone powder. So it's kind of in between the two limestones I showed you before and we are targeting about a 26 to 28% cement reduction. And we see when we do that, our strength values start to look pretty good as far as the OPC is concerned. We do see that as we push the limits of the limestone replacement to take advantage of the high range water reducer that we added, you see our slump here is rather high. We can add more limestone to bring the slump closer to the control. And when we do that, we see a really good, nice accelerating effect. And our strength values at 91 days are far surpassed the control. And we also noticed that the drying shrinkage strain is significantly reduced, which may be beneficial for <coughs> cracking applications. Less shrinkage, less cracking, that kind of thing. And again, our surface resistivity values are increasing substantially. So this is just kind of plugging the reference where all this work is found and there's some other stuff this document has. We did a whole study at cement paste, mortar, and then concrete levels. That's a nice reference if you want to look to see more details about what we've done here. What exactly is going on in these limestone cement systems? 
we can begin to tackle that question by looking at calorimetry. So these are isothermal calorimetry results for a study where we just did a volume replacement of cement with limestone at several different levels and you see that as we increase the limestone additions to the concrete, the silicate and the illuminate reactions become amplified. We also notice that the limestone is pretty much reducing to the very small time frames the induction period. We also noticed that for setting, at the setting time, about the same amount of hydration has occurred for each one of these mixtures, which sort of indicates to us that the limestone that's been added to the mix is participating in whatever percolated structure that's developing as setting is occurring. So looking at FICAT setting, we see this effect again, and we can see that up to 50% replacement of cement with limestone, we get about an hour increase in setting time, and even at a system containing only 5% cement, we still observe setting within 24 hours, which I think is kind of neat. There's almost no cement in there. It's mostly limestone, and you still get setting to occur. So what do we think is happening? <laughs> Our working theory is that the limestone is providing nucleation sites for hydration products to form and that's the accelerating effect is occurring and that we can test this theory by looking at a numerical model of cement hydration where we say that if we allow the limestone that we add into our system to participate in both the accelerating, so providing nucleation sites and setting, becoming part of that nucleated, percolated structure, we see that our experimental results for setting and our simulated results here, they look pretty good. So this was all done computer simulation and we can turn these features on and off to kind of study these different effects. But we also have some images here that kind of show what we're thinking is going on where we have a limestone grain here and then you can see hydration products forming on the surfaces and then at a certain time later they're growing and increasing more. We can do thermogravimetric analysis to kind of validate these simulation results. So here we have a, just a simple 0.5 water cement ratio OPC paste and then similar 0.55 water cement ratio limestone paste and we see that as we do monitor the calcium hydroxide and calcium carbonate formation over time in the limestone system we see more calcium hydroxide formation that's indicative of our accelerating effect and then we also see that our calcite formation remains a little bit stable then about after 24 hours it begins to reduce so there are some confounding influences of carbonation from the atmosphere but there is a measurable reduction in calcium carbonate formation as time increases which sort of tells us that the calcium carbonate is being consumed or reacting in the systems. XRD analysis can kind of confirm what we're seeing with the TGA analysis where we see here in our OPC system Portland data begins to appear, calcium hydroxide begins to appear at about two hours. It remains about at the same levels for a while and then as the setting occurs and hydration occurs it begins to increase. But if we look down here at the limestone system, once it starts it immediately just takes off, which is that reducing the induction period, that accelerating effect. Now we also notice that about 22 hours, hemicarbonate begins to form, which coincides with the TGA result, where we're thinking that the calcium carbonate is really starting to form hemicarbonate around this time. So that would be the reactions with the limestone. Moving on, we then look at this using limestone in high volume fly ash mixtures and what we've done in this set of studies is we've taken and replaced 40 or 60 percent of the cement with a 3 to 1 by volume mixture of fly ash and limestone. That was what we did in a first set of studies and then in the second set of studies we try to maintain and target a certain strength and we've done this by switching to a type 3 cement or reducing the water content and then we've also played with high range water reducing dosage to further increase cement replacement and really try to target a more moderate slump for our fly ash mixtures. So again looking at the ternary diagram this is kind of where we're operating now. We have some mixtures that we did with just fly ash and cement and then ternary mixtures over towards this area that contain cement, fly ash, limestone. So this big table here, this is our phase one concretes where everything is done at constant water content, but you see we're replacing 40% cement with fly ash, then here's our ternary blend mixtures, 30% fly ash, 10% limestone. We did this with the class F and class C mixtures. Phase two, we target a one day strength of about 14 megapascals, and this was done by reducing the water content to 
here by replacing the water with sand and then down here we only were able to achieve about a 50% cement reduction using the type 3 cement by replacing water with the powder. Results from these two studies, we can see that for our, our control right here, and then these are our phase one concretes at constant water volumes here, 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 and here. We had, and then our phase two are the 3A and 5A, and then the type three cements are the 7A, 7B. All this is in this reference down here. I know this table is a lot to take in. But the upshot here is, is that with the limestone additions, we're mitigating the delay with the fly ash, and our strengths are improving. And in the phase two concretes, our strengths are almost on par with OPC concretes. So that's really demonstrating a sort of equivalence of these fly ash cement limestone mixtures with ordinary Portland cement concrete. Rapid chloride permeability results, we see the phase two concretes with cement and limestone and fly ash have much lower values than the controls, which is very good. <laughs> and surface resistivity results, we see higher measurable surface resistivity. These are good durability metrics, so we're producing concretes that would have good durability performance. So those concretes that I showed you before were targeting a minimum slump of one inch, so that's a very low slub concrete. It was done for paving applications. So can we do something similar but with a concrete that has a higher slump? And we were able to do that. And in this set of studies, we just played with the high range water reducing dosage to get the slump up. And we also were able to show that we could increase further cement replacement by increasing the aggregate content. And we were allowed to be able to do this because the limestone and the paste stabilized the paste so segregation didn't become a problem versus in our control concrete with this aggregate content. We had quite a bit of segregation. So we were able to do that and we showed that we can get our control strength was about 42 megapascals, fell right in between what we were able to achieve with these moderate slump limestone containing concretes. And again, just pointing out references, the work is done in these two references here. Our final task here, our final set of studies we do, we look at replacing the fine sand with either limestone or calcium chloride, and this is with cold weather applications in mind. We want to see if limestone can be used as an accelerator in lieu of the calcium chloride. So turning back to isothermal calorimetry results, here we're looking at two different limestones, a dust to fracture limestone, which is just the byproduct of crushing larger limestone pieces to smaller ones and a more pure, fine limestone. Now, this one here had much greater surface area <laughs> than the dust of fracture, but as you'll see, there's some cost analysis to go on here. But in any case, here we see calcium chloride accelerating the reactions as would be expected, and we also notice that about 40% replacement with limestone, we get performance that's starting to look similar to a calcium chloride dosage at 2%. Setting times from VICAT needle penetration show this as well. Here you have the control and you see everything moving to the left indicating the setting has been accelerated and our calcium chloride at 2% and limestone additions are starting to look very similar to each other. At lower temperatures, we see this again. So this is at 10 degrees C. The calcium chloride effect seems to be more predominant at lower temperatures, but the limestone still is demonstrating an accelerating effect. But what about strength measurements? Well, that's a little bit interesting. We see that in our OPC mixture and our mixtures containing limestone, that our seven-day strengths at 23C are below our seven-day strengths at 10 degrees C. So that's kind of a rather interesting result, not something you would expect to see, but really we think it has to do with the fact that calcium carbonate solubility is actually increases at lower temperatures, which is not usually the case. But again, we're still demonstrating equivalent performance here. Finally, we take a shot at a cost analysis here, and we see that 20% dust to fracture limestone, the dosages we looked at were about $2.14 compared to our calcium chloride dosage. But, you know, if you look at these properties, you have to make some trade-offs for how much you want to spend versus what properties you are looking to achieve, whether it be strength or setting time. But the upshot is there's some work to be done here looking doing this type of analysis, but we can kind of show that you can play with the dosages and replacement levels, whether it be for just straight cement paste or cement, to kind of tune your concrete performance to what you need for your application. Finally, summary, we've uh, looked at limestone in high volume fly ash applications with this three to one ratio of fly ash to limestone reduces setting times and the problems that we see with just fly ash replacements. 
We've done it at a 10% level and same water content. We've replaced cement paste up to about 25% cement reductions to achieve. And we've also done replacements of fine sand for calcium chloride to show that the limestone can also act as a calcium chloride accelerator. But cost analysis, there's still some work to be done in tuning your mixture to achieve an economical design with properties and performances that you need. So that is it.